a movie called Pitch Black, it sure is bright. Ladies and gentlemen, hope your week has been going absolutely extraordinarily well, staying in the sun, keeping out of the dark, and making sure to avoid any sort of creatures that happen to be dwelling in it. But of course, sometimes the creatures that you don't see are the ones that are the scariest. I'm talking about your own psyche. Nah, just kidding. We already know we're not real. Did you see? One of the most talked about movies of the last two decades. It wasn't born out of anything. It wasn't based on a comic book series. Any sort of story that had been originated from it was all made up on the spot and brought out to the silver screen in the form of Vin Diesel's new and very recognizable acting career. Pitch Black. Directed by David Twohey. Twohey? 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 Starring Vin Diesel, Rada Mitchell, Cole Hauser, and Keith David. Set in the very distant future, where a ship has crash-landed on an alien planet with an escaped convict on board. That is the least of their worries, because what lies beneath is so much more terrifying. But is this old sci-fi thriller really up to the standard that can be compared to most movies these days? Being way ahead of its time? Or did it have too many good ideas overshadowed by careless issues? Let's find out. Kick it into the good. Very first thing that you hear, Vin Diesel's badass voice is what kicks this movie into high gear and is even more badass with how he plays it. This is Vin Diesel as Vin Diesel does. Looking cool and sophisticated, And the action kicks off. Small bits of dialogue come across as incredible moments and make you laugh all at once. Enough to send shivers down your spine whenever he's on screen. This entire world has got a deep and rich premise to it. So much lore and story inside of these walls throughout the canyon. Not really concerning themselves with the actors, the scenery all comes together. What's actually going on? Who's involved? Who was here before? What are these creatures? It gives off a lot of questions and answers some of them to the best of its ability. But since this is supposed to be an action movie, you wouldn't really expect to have many of those answers given. The one good thing I will say about the cinematography are the two methods which they show both Riddick and the creatures. Riddick being our main character. From his point of view, bright with streaks, heat slash night vision effect. So when you're seeing it during the daytime, there is a lot of brightness that is circulating. When it comes to night scenes, really comes into view. Especially with the creatures. Their sonar effect is different than I've ever seen in any other movie. Since this came out in 2000, most people will look at this and think it's quite cheaply done. But honestly, you really don't see any problems. Black and grey look constantly moving that has the light bouncing off the walls back in so they can see and hear. And with this comes some very well shot moments with pure tension and chaos. Send your heart racing. The writing is quite compelling. More notably with Riddick, the way that he gives off certain monologues, little jokes or moments in between, even cool little quotes. Every single time he says something, you you want to listen to it more and more epic with each line of dialogue that's being said by him. If the start of this video was any consolation of what it is, there are a few glaring issues that can show up in the dark just by shining a light on them. This is a two hour movie. It would be able to go through each character, what's happening, where they are, basically everything that I asked. Two hours is too long for this, and the action only really kicks off about halfway, leaving the first half dull and lifeless. It is painfully slow. I found myself looking at my phone more than anything for the first 40 minutes of this. 40 minutes! I don't understand how you can go a whole 40 minutes in a movie without delivering something. And though I liked some of the cinematography that was involved in this, I couldn't take away from the biggest problem that was here. Too much damn shaky cam. And we're not talking a found footage, smooth-ish type look. We're talking full on someone running through a blizzard only wearing a t-shirt. That freaking shaky. And it killed the first 10 minutes for me. There are so many quick cuts, weird changes in color frequency. You're watching a literal color wheel on screen. Black, white, red, yellow, blue, back to normal color again. It doesn't know how to make up its mind. It's been run through seven different filters all at once and thinks that this is supposed to be futuristic. This is sci-fi. You seen Alien, right? Didn't really need to change the color effects. And that worked. And Alien came out way before this. Sudden shots with loss of audio that don't include any of the trademark signatures you would see in this situation. Heavy breathing, heartbeat. No, it just...
It might look like me sloppily editing this. That was one of the scenes. Weird zoom in effect rotating. Like that scene in Elf. Disorienting. It makes you feel really uneasy. But the only thing that I felt, queasiness. <laughs> Green screen central, using bright shots to cover up outline on our actors, and darker shots to camouflage from the horrible CGI. You aren't fooling anyone here. When they have some of the creatures in the light, it just doesn't look too good. Very under budget. $23 million budget, what the hell did you spend your money on? It wasn't the CGI. Did you put all the money into the negatives that you decide to throw in? Here is where we'll put on the filter. Yeah. That looks good, right? Some of the editing just felt a little sloppy. Moments that were shown to you suddenly blindsided and forgotten about in the very next moment. Having him shave his head and then in the very next scene, his hair is back. That's just lazy. Now, I don't know if it was because of the cutting room floor or issues in between or whether or not that scene was supposed to be added in later. Wasn't right to see. That it drops you into a story without any context. Isn't based on anything. There's no way of being able to look at something beforehand or read about or something like that before going into this. I had more questions than answers once the movie had finished. Even going through the movie I had too many questions. If you were to take out the first 40 minutes of this and you leave that last end chunk, then you've got yourself a worthy sci-fi action thriller. I like the second half of this way more than I did the first. It somehow takes a massive turn, going through all the pointless dialogue and exposition, and then throwing all the action in right at the end. Has some good, tense moments. It's incredible to see. I was paying so much more attention. I didn't notice that I was actually sitting forward in my chair. But that was the second half. You want to grab an audience, you do it right at the start. You can have a few moments in between that has that little exposition, but don't ruin it. And sadly, all these moments are shadowed by the darkness. That's why Pitch Black gets. Now, I always like to end my reviews with a quote from the film. And my favorite quote was, did not know who he was fucking with. You know it when you see it. But that being said, did you see it? Will you see it? And if so, let me know in the comments. Until then, I've been DJ. And always remember, did you see it? So this was the first in a trilogy. Well, if sequels mean anything, then I guess the second's gonna be just as bad. All of the other ratings that I've seen, most people said that they didn't like the second and they liked this one more. Maybe it'll be different. Maybe I'll enjoy it more. All I know is if I get more Vin Diesel, hella fucking Luya.